please join in the opening. For all the saints who from their labors rest, who thee by faith before the world confessed, thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Hello, I'm Pastor Ernie Green, and thank you for uh, tuning in, listening, watching our 2020 COVID video series, and today is Sunday, November 1st, All Saints Day uh, across the, the earth and uh, Christian churches everywhere, and today we stop and we give thanks and praise to God for the memories of those we, who we've lost, who are now saints in his kingdom. And we're grateful for the, the blessings that they were to us personally and to us collectively as your church on earth. So we are grateful for all these blessings. We're open for business. Every Sunday, 8 o'clock, 10.45 a.m., and Monday evenings at 7. And we're doing our very best to keep everybody safe. Everything gets sanitized between services. We're wearing masks. Everything's getting cleaned over and over and over. And it's, we're ready for you to come back anytime you're ready. So hopefully, prayerfully, I'll see you soon. We will begin our time together today, though, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Let us then empty our hearts of our miserable failures. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, and we justly deserve your punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Now, Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now the Holy Gospel, according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me when I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, 
that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, when, whom the Father has sent in my name, will teach you all things and bring you to remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Gospel Response O blessed saints in bright array, now safely home in endless day. Extol the Lord who with his word sustained you on your homeward way. The steep and narrow path you trod, you toiled and sowed the word abroad. Rejoice and bring your fruits and sing before the throne of God, our King. The myriad angels raised their song. O saints, sing with the happy throng. Lift up one voice, let heaven rejoice in our Redeemer's song. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's gospel that I just read is based upon the story, Lesson 26, called The Hour of Darkness. The lesson describes what occurs on the night that Jesus was betrayed. And it continues right up to the death of Christ on the cross. And the night that Jesus was betrayed was the the night that we now refer to as Maundy Thursday or Holy Thursday. Jesus ate his last supper with his, his disciples that night. And he taught them many things during that meal. He washed their feet to illustrate to them how they should treat other people in their own ministries. He instituted Holy Communion during that supper. And he used the same words that we still use today, 2,000 years later. And he taught them. And in the process, he taught us. He taught us that he was going to the Father in heaven. That he would prepare a place for them and for us. And then return and take us to be with him to that heavenly kingdom. He was lining everything up for them. He was crossing all the T's, dotting all the I's. And in the middle of it all, he taught one of the greatest lessons for those disciples and for us today. He explained that he was the way, he was the truth, and he was the life. He was also the only way to the Father in heaven. There's not a lot of different ways to the Father. You can't get to the Father by other religions. You can't get to the Father by other faiths. No. If you're not a Christian, if you don't believe that Christ is a cornerstone of your faith, if you don't believe he died on a cross and rose again after being buried for three days, you have no way to get to the heaven, the heavenly kingdom. You will be locked out. You have to have that understanding and that belief. And boy, if everybody had that understanding and that belief, we would all spend eternity with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But unfortunately, not everybody does. You know, prior to our arrival into the heavenly kingdom, Jesus, well, he's, he's going to go there first and get our eternal homes ready, just, just as he promised. And you know the price for those homes? Free. Jesus already paid the price for you and I and our heavenly homes on the cross. Right now is a good time to be selling property and real estate in the, the earthly real estate market. You know, bidding wars are going on for average, 
average homes, and the new prices now are, are way more than they're, they should be selling for, way more than they're worth. Well, many people are buying these homes not realizing that, well, once they put that money up, they're not going to have enough money left to, to make all the repairs that are going to need to be made, to do everything that needs to be made just for them to, to live in some of these homes. They spent too much money on the house in the first place. And then in a few years, they want to spend more money to, to remodel, or they'll outgrow the house and need a bigger house, or they want to downsize to a smaller house once the kids are out of the house. With the way the prices are going, even the small, smaller house is going to be more expensive. But eventually, someone else will be living in that home because we'll be too old to manage it or because we've already passed through this world. But at the end, we can look back and we can determine whether or not we spent more than we should have on at home. A home that we can't keep forever. A home that we can't take with us. You know, as we approach our final years, our priorities change somewhat. We begin to look ahead to our new home, the one that Jesus is now preparing for us, just as he promised. I believe him. Do you? Furthermore, I trust him. And you know, there's a big difference between believing and trusting. If you grew up in western New York, especially in Niagara County and around Niagara Falls, you're most likely taught in school about the great Charles Blondin. Blondin was a French tightrope walker who achieved his greatest fame for several walks across the Niagara Gorge on a, on a wire. He crossed the, the gorge with his manager on his shoulders once. He, he crossed the gorge pushing a wheelbarrow. He crossed the gorge carrying a chair. He stopped in the middle of the gorge, balanced the chair in one leg on the wire, and he sat down and rested. Oh boy. He crossed the rope while blindfolded. He crossed while in a sack. And once he did it on stilts. I don't recommend any of those things. There was no one before or after that had the talent that Blondin had. And after Blondin had passed into Canada the day he pushed a wheelbarrow across, he asked the spectators there if they believed that he could turn around and make it back to the U.S. side pushing the same wheelbarrow. And he all said, oh yeah, we believe it, we just saw you do it. So then he asked if anybody would like to take a ride in a wheelbarrow as he pushed it across. And he found no takers. They all said, oh, no, that's, that's a little bit too dangerous. See, that's the difference between believing and trusting. Yeah. We can believe that Jesus, Jesus will provide for all of our needs, but sometimes we're not really ready to get into that wheelbarrow and actually trust him. You know, when Jesus told us he was going to prepare a place for us, he also told us, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to, to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And we can believe that. But are we living in such a manner that we are trusting in him? There's a retired pastor who's flying from Baltimore to Dallas to a pastoral conference. And not too long into the flight, the, the pilot put the seatbelt light down and instructed instruct everybody to return to their seats but the seat fell aside because they were about to run into some severe turbulence. Well, boy, did they ever run into some bad storms. All the rest of the way to Dallas. And the plane would get lifted up, and it drop, and it turn, and it twist. It was shaking and rocking. It was horrible. A horrible flight. They stopped all meal service, all beverage services. It was too dangerous for the stewardess and flight attendants to get out of their seats. People were on board were crying and they were yelling and they were praying. And in the middle of it all, this pastor who was scared out of his mind himself looked over and saw a young girl sitting in her seat reading a book. Didn't seem to be bothered by anything. And she was very calm. She seemed to be at peace with everything that was going on. Really. No anxiousness, no, no fear in her at all. Eventually, they made it to Dallas safely. 
And the people were very relieved to be there. But the pastor cut up to the little girl in the airport and asked her, how could you be so brave during all these storms? And her answer was, my dad is a pilot at that point, and I trust him because he said he was going to take me to Dallas, and I knew he would. That's the difference between believing and trusting. Brothers and sisters, our Heavenly Father is piloting us to a new destination, just as he promised he would. He sent his son Jesus to lead us back to him so that he could continue to guide us on that path. Jesus began this gospel lesson with these words. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. But we finish this gospel with Jesus saying, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. He really does not want our hearts to be troubled. He said it twice here. So let us not be troubled. Let us not be afraid. Because Jesus is preparing a place for each of us. A place that will be better than any place on earth will ever be. Believe in Jesus and his promises. Trust in him and trust in him alone. Because he is returning to take all of us home. Those whose names are read on All Saints Day, they are now living in those, those new homes, their new homes. They have no more fears. They have no more troubles. One day we will be there as well. That's my prayer for all of you today that you would always remember that our focus should always center on Jesus and his cross. Because he is the only way, the only truth, and the only life, the only eternal life that we can find. I pray that you would give thanks and praise for the gifts that your Heavenly Father has given to you, including the new home that his son is preparing for you right now. Tell him thank you. Tell him that he is loved and appreciated. Most of all today, though, I pray that you would never allow the lies of Satan to cause you to question the words or the promises of God. His promises are real. They are found in his son. They are found in his word. They are found in his spirit. But most of all, they are found in the Savior. His name is Jesus. So God bless all of you today. God bless your eternal home being prepared for you right now. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, the giver and perfecter of all things good and wonderful in our lives, we thank and praise you for the continuing to bless us individually as your sons and daughters, but this congregation as well at St. Paul Lutheran. We are so very thankful for everything you do for us. We thank you for the blessing of your word. We thank you for the blessing of your servants. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of those who came before us, those who now rest with you in your heavenly kingdom, the saints that came first. And Father, we are thankful for the role models that they were to so many of us. We are thankful for the saints that they have become. And Heavenly Father, we pray that we also would one day inherit the, the same gifts, that we would also be saints in your kingdom. Fill us with your love, fill us with your mercy, fill us with your grace, so that when it's our time, we will transition right into your kingdom. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks to, for the strength that you give us to fight the good fight of faith, and we give you thanks and praise that you have protected us from this COVID virus. We thank you that you have protected us from Satan, and we thank you that you have protected us from everything evil in this world. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon the, uh, the upcoming election here on Tuesday. Heavenly Father, let your will be done here. And uh, in all things, Father, we thank and praise you for the blessings of your will. We thank you mostly for the blessings of your son. And in your son, the great physician, we thank you for the healing that you brought to many people here. We continue to lift up many people here who are still uh, sick, who are still hospitalized, including Nancy Riker. We pray for Nancy, we pray for Wayne, we pray for a continued measure of healing for her. 
And Heavenly Father, in all things, again, we thank you for all these blessings, but we thank you for the greatest blessing, your Son, our Savior Jesus, from whom every other blessing in our lives come from. And Heavenly Father, in his name, we offer you our thanks and praise. Amen. Please join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Praise be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Cowboys America!